Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, February 5th. I'm Jimmy Prince with the details. A group advocating for the legalization of marijuana here has been formed. The organization called the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Cannabis Revival Committee was formed on Saturday, 31st January, and has a threefold mandate. According to Chairperson Junior Spirit Cuttle, the group will focus on the decriminalization, alternative livelihood, and the medical benefits of the marijuana plant. Cuttle said persons in the region and internationally are realizing the benefits of cannabis and St. Vincent and the Grenadines should also fall in line. In fact, right now, the issue of medical marijuana is before CARICOM. Internationally, more states in the United States of America are going towards decriminalization. People are becoming more conscious. Jamaica has taken the lead in the Caribbean. So we think the climate is fitting and we have been having some consultation from last year. The last Saturday was the last of those consultations. And at that meeting, we formed the organization called Cannabis Revival Movement. The activist said the move to decriminalize marijuana should be taken seriously as some youths are currently being affected by the system currently in place. And by criminalizing our youths, you put them in a situation where many are unable to follow their studies, many are unable to improve their livelihood because you know what, if you have a bad record, you can't get the sort of job you may want to get. You can't travel as you want to travel. So, we calling, the CR, the CRC is calling for the decriminalization of marijuana and, ult and ultimately, it's, it's legalization. The other members of the SVG Cannabis Revival Committee are Alvin Buffer Collins as Secretary, Financial Controller Hassan Kennedy, Public Relations, Bongo Shaka Dabrio and Ras Jacob, Education Officer Empress Mudupe, Secretary J.P. Shumon, and the committee members Ajit Duncan and Ras Zebi. Meanwhile, two Grenadian nationals have been busted with over 72 pounds of marijuana off the North Leeward coast of St. Vincent. The two, Joseph Sutherland, 42, and Lennox Lett, 17, were arrested and charged on two separate drug possession charges, including possession and for the purpose of trafficking. They appeared at the Serious Offences Court today. Sutherland, who has connections here, was granted bail in the sum of $40,000, while Lett was remanded in custody as he was deemed a flight risk. April 27th has been set for the trial. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment is said to be closely monitoring the measles outbreak which has affected several states in the United States and also in Mexico. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Simon Kiza Beach is urging all parents to ensure that their children get the second dose of the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine, that's the MMR, if it is due to ensure that they are fully protected against these diseases. The MMR and other compulsory vaccines can be accessed at no cost at all health centers across the country. National epidemiologist Dr. Rosmond Adams says that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been free of endemic transmission of measles since 1991 because of the success of the country's expanded program on immunization. He adds that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has 100% compliance for the first dose of the vaccine and that the second dose falls about 98%. According to Dr. Adams, normally the second dose for MMR is given at four to six years old, but to better capture those who may not return for the dose, they are now considering giving it at about two years. Measles is a highly contagious viral disease that is accompanied by fever, conjunctivitis or sore eyes, and a runny nose. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, issued a measles alert on January 28, 2015. Health psychologist at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, Dr. Josel Miller, says it is important that persons suffering from cancer and other non-communicable diseases are given the necessary support. Yesterday, SVG joined the rest of the world in observing World Cancer Day, which is dedicated to raising awareness of cancer and encouraging its prevention, detection, and treatment. Cancer is among the leading causes of death worldwide, with approximately 14 million new cases and 8.2 million cancer-related deaths in 2012. 
Dr. Miller, who is the founder of the cancer support organization called the Scotch, said the group was established in August of 2014 to encourage persons suffering with the disease to be strong, courageous, optimistic, resilient, confident, and hopeful. As you hear bad news, we go into a state of shock. A lot of the time persons misunderstand exactly what is being said to them and you know there's a sense of denial for some persons. Some persons do the complete opposite and become very angry because you know especially if it's someone who feels that they will have been living a particular lifestyle. So I've done all these things, I've exercised, I ate well, I did everything that every doctor would you know suggest that I do to be healthy and then they are learning I have a terminal illness, so a lot of persons can get angry. Some persons get angry with God. So there are a lot of things, a multiplicity of things that happens at this, the time of a diagnosis. And sport, I cannot say it enough. Sometimes even you know, before medical intervention, support is what is going to make the difference for the next day. Dr. Miller says keeping a stress-free mind is also a necessary factor for good health and that persons must see must not see the disease like cancer as a death sentence. Stress can cause you to develop all kind of complications. And we understand that the mind is a powerful thing. Just as you know the mind can you know cause you to lie in your bed and not come out, your mind also can tell you to get up and fight again. So we want you to always have that positive spirit to fight on, to keep pressing. Even when things get hard, because some of the, the treatments you do for cancer, like the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy, we understand that you know it can cause you to feel very sick. You lose your hair, you have all these other things that you have to consider. But we want you to believe that, okay, once there is life, once you wake up and you have the ability to breathe, then let's keep going. Residents of Mariaqua are invited to a town hall meeting this Saturday to discuss the proposed construction of the Mesopotamia Polyclinic. The meeting will take place at the Mariaqua Government School from 5 p.m. and will hear remarks from Parliamentary Representative Gerlin Miguel, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment Clayton Bergen and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of, of Health Louis Deschamps. There will also be presentations by a number of other persons. Minister of Foreign Affairs Camilo Gonzalez says he is disappointed that the opposition does not understand and appreciate the Petrocarib agreement between this country and Venezuela. Gonzalez said the opposition's constant discrediting of the oil agreement is a threat to Caribbean solidarity and the need to conduct proper research on any matter relating to the agreement before they criticize. They don't understand its importance. They don't understand its terms. And they don't understand the solidarity that these countries have for one another. That is why they argue against it. If the United States could read Petrocarib Agreement, and it's available online, and it's on my Facebook page, Shame. good Lord, Shame. 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 take a gander. Before you spend years attacking the thing. Yeah. And then attack it. Yeah. Know your facts before you decide to distort them. Rising on a point of order of misrepresentation, parliamentary rep for Central Kingstown and the opposition shadow minister for energy, Senator Sinclair Leacock, clarified that the NDP does not have a problem with the diplomat diplomatic relations with Venezuela as being touted by the foreign minister. He said that his party, however, is concerned that they did not have details of the actual memorandum of understanding on the agreement with that country. We continue to wish the government of people of Venezuela well. Our contention with the Petrocarib, or as I have made it, is the fact that when the agreement was signed with St. Vincent of Indians, we requested in this parliament a copy of the Memorandum of Understanding and or Agreement with Venezuela. In fact, to this point, we have not seen Memorandum of Understanding and Agreement with Venezuela. That agreement and or understanding, which is a legal relationship, is different from the factual matrix that we may outlined in the agreement itself, because that is a sovereign debt responsibility of the people of Senegal's independence. 
this parliament has not seen that document. So to continue to harbor that we have not gone on site to see A, B, or C. In other news, principal of the Kingstown Preparatory School, Carl Ross, says there is a need for children to express themselves in the creative arts. This call was made at the opening of the primary school's performing arts festival, PRISPAF, which commenced on Monday, 2nd February. With over 60 primary schools expected to participate, Principal Ross encouraged all the participants to show off their talent and to have a good time. We know that creative arts is part of our timetable and uh, so we are not going to deny you an opportunity to perform. Like I heard so just said, we don't believe in that, we believe in the whole child. So we are presently the champions for inter-primary school athletic sports and uh, we want to defend the title this year and so we are going to expose you this morning, you are going to show